الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا على نعمة الإسلام فهذه النعمة العظيمة التي أنقذنا الله بها من الظلمات إلى النور ومن علينا بها بخير خلقه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقدوتنا وأسرتنا ومعلمنا وسراجنا المنير وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم ما بعد Respective scholars, academics, and my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to extend my gratitude and be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the ability to be in his house on a very special day, Yawmul Jumu'ah, Friday, and all of us say Alhamdulillah. We send unlimited salam and salutations to the greatest messenger, Muhammad salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. We bear witness that is none worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and he has no partners. And we bear witness that the noble Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the final messenger and slave of Allah, the Almighty. Respected worshippers, Allah the Almighty, he blessed us with so many different types of favors, gifts, and ni'am. Quran al-Kareem confirms this fact by saying, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you start counting the favors of Allah, gifts of Allah, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can never finish the count. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave us so many different types of ni'mah, different types of gifts. But we just need to look a little bit harder to see how much favors and gifts Allah the Almighty He gave us. But before going to this, I'd like to share with you a beautiful statement of the great Khalifa, the great Caliph, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, where he said that at taqwa when he was talking about the God consciousness, fearing Allah the Almighty, of course we hear the taqwa, what taqwa a lot, but how many of us we understand the essence and the meaning of a taqwa? So here Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he tells us the meaning of taqwa by saying, At-taqwa hi al min al jaleel Taqwa is fearing Allah the Almighty, the majesty, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he's saying, wal amal bi tanzeel But if you just claim that you fear Allah and you don't practice and implement His commandments, that doesn't really fulfill the requirement of taqwa or the God consciousness. So here he says that you have to also practice upon the revelation. Whatever Allah revealed, you have to practice on them. And then he says, well, qana'atu bil qaleel. But also you'll be satisfied with little. You may not have so much, but you're still happy. You're still satisfied. Qana'a is so important uh, because uh, many of our people, many of us at this time, we have become, uh, you know, we, we are not happy with what we have. We're not satisfied with what we have. There is no itma'naan of qalb. There is no satisfaction of the soul, contentment. Ali ibn Abi Talib said that you have to be satisfied with little. This is part of taqwa. al qanaa bil qaleel. Be satisfied and content with whatever you have. Wal istadadu liyawm al rahim. And then also he says that preparation for the last day, part of the taqwa as well. Brothers and sisters, as mentioned earlier, Allah the Almighty, He gave so much ni'am to us, gifts and blessings. One of the major blessings of Allah the Almighty is our health. Sahha, a good health. And honestly, we cannot do anything without, without good health. To do anything in this life, whether even to work or study or even to worship Allah, wa ta'ala, we need a good health. And this is one of the greatest ni'mah of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, which we don't realize. And uh, even Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, to take advantage, he says, sahataka qabla saqami in another hadith. He said, you know, take advantage of your good health before you fall ill. And we are responsible to look after our health, and look after our, our, our body, look after our mind and soul. And this is the reason why Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a famous hadith, all of you are responsible people. All of you are shepherds. And you will be questioned about your shepherdhood. You will be questioned about your responsibility. 
on the day of judgment. And then he says, وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّةٍ وَالْمَرْأَةُ رَعِيَّةٌ فِي بَيْتِ زَوْجِهَا وَمَسْؤُولَةٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّةِهَا A woman, she's responsible in the household of her husband and she'll be questioned about her responsibility. وَالْخَادِمُ رَاعٍ فِي مَالِ سَيِّدِهِ وَمَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ And also a worker, an employed person or a servant, he's also responsible under the supervision of his Sayyid, of his employer, or of his manager, or, 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 or master, and he will be questioned about his responsibility. Then he says, All of you are responsible people and you will be questioned about your responsibility. Health, looking after our health, taking care of our body, and our mind and our soul is an important obligation set and prescribed by Allah and his messenger, salawatu rabbi. وسلامه عليه الله سبحانه وتعالى سيدنا نور القرآن وأنفقوا في سبيل الله he said that spend in the path of Allah give charity صدقة زكاة spend and 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 take care of other people welfare being there for each other وأنفقوا في سبيل الله ولا تلقوا بأيديكم إلى التحلق and then he said do not destroy yourself don't destroy yourself. Don't do anything that harmful that, that will actually cause harm for your body and your mind and soul. You're not allowed to do that. What It's a nahi in the noble Quran. La nahiya, like don't do it. Allah is saying, is preventing and saying, don't destroy yourself with your own hand. Don't consume things that will be harmful. Don't eat things that are harmful. Don't do things and habits that are harmful. Because the prohibition, a lot of people are still, of course, like maybe smoking on a daily basis. People are consuming alcohol. People are people have different habits, and some even people, some people have heart and other different types of habits. Some people are having continuously, like maybe like, you know, zorda and all the uh, uh, all the all the items that are harmful for our body. But Allah says, don't destroy yourself. If anything that's confirmed by the doctors that are harmful. Must avoid, and Allah said in the Noble Quran very clear, very, very clearly. Noble Messenger Muhammad also said in the hadith, La dara wa la dara. It's an important hadith and a famous hadith which says, Don't there is no harm and no reciprocation of harm, neither harm nor any reciprocation of any harm. So, for example, you cannot harm anyone uh, and you cannot do things that will harm other people, harm yourself, neither harm yourself nor harm other people. And so, therefore, also Islam promotes something very, very important, a concept called al al, -al -i'tidal, the moderation. Everything, the, everything in our life needs moderation. You can't do too much things, you can't do things that are too much and that are actually harmful and that can cause harm for your body and for your soul, self, for your soul and for your even family. So here, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith very clearly that, um, uh, two men, uh, they came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this hadith is, sorry, mentioned in the book of Imam al-Bukhari. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asr radiallahu anhu, he said, Qala, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Abdullah, alam ukhbar annaka tasum al-nahar wa taqoom al-layl. He told Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asr, O oh, Abdullah, uh, wasn't I informed, wasn't I told that you actually fast during the night and you Stay awake, you do qiyam during the night, sorry, you fast during the day and you do qiyam during the night. Wasn't I informed about this? He said, Yes, surely, O Prophet of Allah, said, Yes, I do this. Prophet said, Don't do this. He said, Sum wa asbir. Fast during some days of the week, of the day of the week, and break your fast during the other days of the week. And he said, do qiyam during some portion of the night and don't do qiyam, sleep during the other portions of the night. And then he said, because your body has right over you. Your body has right over you. Your eyes have right over you. And your partner has right over you. There are people who are spending so much time, wasting so much time socializing, going out with their friends during the night and spending hours and hours. And there is no uh, any uh, uh, sensitivity with regards to their health, with regards to the welfare of their family. And we have people also are so busy with community work, meetings after meetings, and people are too busy with the activities. Yes, these are all important stuff, but there has to be a balance 
as mentioned by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then also, uh, with regards to our health, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will ask us on the Day of Judgment about our health, the first thing. So, here's a hadith mentioned in the book of Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah. Abu Hurairat radiyallahu anhu, he said, Fala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna awwala ma yus'alu anhu yawm al-qiyama, ya'ni al-abd, min al-na'im an yuqala lahu. The first thing a slave of Allah would be questioned on the Day of Judgment on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Min al-na'im with regards to the uh, blessings and, and, and favors and, and, and bounty. And you call alam, he would ask, he would be told by Allah, Alam nusih laka jisma, then I give you good health. Why have you done with your health? Have you, did you take care of your health? Did you look after your body? Did you look after your soul and mind? Do you look after your, your uh, the, the ni'mah Allah gave? Alam nusih laka jisma. Question by Allah the Almighty on the Day of Judgment. Wa nurweeka min al mari And then I give you a question first by giving cool water. Allah the Almighty will ask the question about our health on the Day of Judgment. So Muslim is a person of moderation. Every even ibadah is moderation, as Prophet Sallam said. They said like, you know, sum wa aftil, fast and pray. And then he said, pray tahajjud and also sleep during some portion of the night because everything has right uh, over you your eyes have rights over you your, uh, your 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 minds have rights over you your family your children and uh, all, all people around you your relatives they all have rights over you so what do we do respected and uh, respected worshipers what do we do to look after ourselves you know what are the things that we can do of course in our in human body we have something called soul and we have mind and body. Now, uh, modern world, especially people around us today, only busy looking after their uh, body and neglecting the importance of soul. And therefore, you can see people have everything they can think of, yet people are agitated, unhappy. People laugh, and people are looking for some sort of satisfaction, <laughs> enjoyment, inner happiness, because there is not any nourishment for the soul. So what do we do in order to especially give the food for our soul? Just the way we have to look after our body, we also have to look, to look after our soul. And what are the nourishment and food for the soul? Here is a hadith of Prophet where he said, towards the end of a long hadith, he said, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudra. Be aware, in a human body, there is a piece of meat, a piece of flesh, mudra. If that piece of flesh is sound and, and healthy, the whole entire body will be sound and healthy. And if that piece of flesh is corrupt, the whole entire body will be corrupt and unhealthy. Then Prophet Sallallahu said, He said, this is none other than our heart, human soul, human body, human soul, the, the qalb of a human being. So we have to look after our soul and we have to give food to our soul. But what are the food of the soul? People are looking for some sort of contentment, satisfaction. People are unhappy with the, with the look, the colors they have, the genders they have. They want to change themselves, tattoos after tattoos. People are doing so many things in order to keep themselves happy. But nothing is, uh, uh, everything is failing to keep them happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the nourishment for the soul is the Thikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah, worshiping Allah correctly, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and only one Allah, the Wahid, the monotheism, but most importantly, constant dhikr and remembrance of Allah. One of the major purposes of religion of Islam is to bring us into the constant remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembrance of Allah the Almighty. So here Allah said, Al Madina Aman. Those who believe in Allah, the remembrance of Allah, the zikr of Allah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. All these words of zikr, words of remembrance of Allah, give satisfaction to the souls. Beware to know that the zikr of Allah gives contentment to the human soul. Worship, the prayers, why do you pray? It's important nourishment and food for our soul because through prayers, it's a mi'raj, it's a meeting point with Allah. It's a way we can, we can keep connected with Allah. And when we say food for the soul, all the ibadah, the worship, tadhillul, khudur, all the humiliation, 
and most importantly, five daily prayers are the forms of giving food to our soul. So just the way we have to look after our body, we also have to look after our soul. And this is the reason why Islam is giving this guidance, Islam is giving this guideline, and we see Alhamdulillah on a daily basis, uncountable people are coming to Islam, converting and taking shahada on a daily basis in all major mosques. And one of the reasons for why Islam is spreading very fast and very rapidly, it is because the Islam is, is, is fulfilling that gap that people have in their, in their lives, especially celebrities, rich people, well-known, famous people, and people from all walks of life, they are in need of this satisfaction and inner happiness and contentment. Now, of course, having said that, we also have to look after our body because Islam gives the importance to uh, uh, look after our body. Prophet said in a famous hadith mentioned in the book of Imam Muslim, Abu Huraira radiallahu he narrates the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al Mu'minul Qawi, a stronger believer. Qawi means strong, physically, mentally, and spiritually. A stronger believer physically. Khayrun ahabbu ila Allah is more, is better, and more beloved to Allah the Almighty than a weak believer, Al Mu'minul Ta'if. But he said, Ufi kullil khayr. However, in every one of them is benefit. Every one of them is good, whether strong or weak, but always a stronger believer, a stronger Muslim, a stronger person physically and in all sense is better because he can produce more, he can do more, he can or she can uh, do much more for the family, their own selves and for their community and for their for the, for the humanity in general <coughs> if you are strong physically. So we have to really look after ourselves. So what should we do in order to look after ourselves? Number one, I say, we have to force a healthy diet, eat good food. I know we have a problem of every community has some sort of habits and problems. And we all have these issues of, you know, uh, unhealthy diet, excessive, you know, eating excessive food, too much food. We all have these habits, but we have to remind ourselves. We have to, we have to create awareness. It's so important that we remind each other. Because if we remind each other, then at least, we, even though you eat, but you know back in your mind, no, I, I should be trying to cut down on things, whatever you're having excessive or too much. So we have to really create the awareness amongst ourselves as part of our faith and religion, as part of the teaching of Islam, that we need to really create this awareness. We need to have healthy food and also cut down on, on, on junk food, such as for example, uh, you know, chicken and chips, you know, some of us here probably have on a daily basis, and you know, all these junk food that we can think of, we should cut down on them. I know it's challenging, it's difficult, but, uh, but to, but as part of our religion, we should take this further very seriously. And just the way uh, many Arab, uh, uh, the, the, the Arabs, they said, the proverb, famous, famous, Mathal al-Arabi said, al madida to they said the stomach is the, is the food, uh, is the house of all illness. The stomach is the house of every sickness and illness. Wal hamiyya ma'ashkul and he said, and, and they said, protection of the, of the stomach is the uh, root of all remedy and and of course shifa and, and, and uh, treatment. So therefore we should be very, very careful. Also, many of us as Muslims, we don't do exercise. We don't have, we, we have, we, we have uh, this problem, the lack of exercise. Some of us, we are embarrassed to even do exercise. We have to do some sort of exercise. Living in this country, given the context of weather, climate, uh, a lot of fatty food, and really uh, I believe that we all need to engage in some sort of um, sport, sport activities or uh, some sort of um, exercise uh, with a gym or jogging or biking. There's so many ways you can do. You need to really see what is suitable for you, what is good for you, and what is what will be comfortable for you, uh, I and mean, what will be beneficial for you. And that's how we have to all start looking into exercise. And, and honestly, the minimum thing you can do is just jog. Like, it is not costly, you have to pay anything. You just need to know how to do it, maybe like you know, where to do it, and you just do it. It, it doesn't cost anything. Biking is another way of doing it. But also, if you can go to gym, this is also very, very good and very important. And I think we Muslims, we have failed to really set up the good gym's environment, which has also Islamic environment, where our brothers can uh, have exercise in a separate time, and sisters can also uh, uh, exercise uh, with, with some, sort of, some sort of segregation. This is something we have failed. I know some brothers have tried and attempted to open up gym centers, but they uh, somehow they probably couldn't sustain. But I think all our businessmen, especially Muslim businessmen, those who are, mashallah, subhanahu wa blessed you with good wealth, and, and, and you are blessed with, uh, you know, financially you're blessed, I think you should 
all of us should uh, think very seriously to open up the gym centers because they're very important for the health of Muslims. And if we are healthy, then we can do better. We can produce better. We can even worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. And you know Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he promoted and he even said to teach our children um, how to swim and how to even like, for example, uh, ride the horses. He promoted all these things, showing the importance of uh, good health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice upon what has been said and may Allah the Almighty give us the ability to take care of the great ni'mah of health, the sahha, and also take care of our body and of course our heart and soul and also our mind because they all come side by side and they're very very important and of course I don't want to go to the protection of the, of the mind because you can read a lot, there's lots of information available but generally religion, the Quran, the Sunnah, the revelation helps to uh, uh, promote the well-being of people, of human beings. So, faith really helps. And this is the reason why when we ask, when people are taking shahada, always we ask this question, what brings you this noble step today? And they always say that we found something good in this religion. Honestly, we take this religion for granted. But lots of people, they found so much, they struggled, and they went through so much hardship to find this beautiful religion. And when I say, I mean it because uh, we can see in front of our eyes how many people are uh, blessed with this Islam. So let's take this religion seriously and it's teaching. It's a religion of comprehension, it's a religion of well being, it's a religion of selflessness, it's a religion of care and love, compassion, mercy, unity, bond of brotherhood, and all these beautiful things are promoted and taught by Allah and His Messenger, the greatest Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's all for today, inshaAllah. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ability to practice upon what has been said.